So welcome uh, today's edition of Chat with Chair. Uh, we have with us uh, Mr. Deepak uh, Deva. Uh, Mr. Deepak Deva is currently the Managing Director um, of Travel Corporation of India Limited, a market leader in inbound tourism uh, from countries such as UK, Germany, France, Russia, Spain, Portugal, and Japan. He also uh, co-chairs the Tourism Committee of Tiki and is a member of the National Tourism Advisory uh, Council Ministry of Tourism. He's an industry veteran. Uh, he strongly supports the idea of inclusive tourism by NGOs that work with women from some of the most marginalized sections of society. He's also a member of the uh, governing council of the Responsible Tourism Society uh, of India, which helps promote environmentally responsible and sustainable uh, practices in industry. Uh, welcome, uh, Mr. Deepak Deva, to this uh, uh, very interesting uh, session of Chat with Chair. Thank you so much, Mr. Chennai. You know, I mean, everybody knows, but I think it'll be very interesting to get your perspective that the pandemic, uh, the first wave impacted the travel and tourism and hospitality industry. Uh, in between the two waves, uh, we thought it was picking up. In fact, some of us traveled even to uh, Srinagar. But uh, inbound tourism uh, is uh, now uh, predicted to take at least two to three years to recover. Uh, what are your views on the whole current state of the tourism industry and the path going forward to the inbound tourism sector? Uh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chinoy, for inviting us uh, to have a chat with you. Uh, the <clears throat> inbound industry, as you can imagine, uh, has had no recovery since March because the borders are shut. Uh, the domestic business had its, uh, you know, um, uh, had some very good months last year. And in fact, some of the hotels uh, in, in places like Jaipur or Goa or uh, in Rajasthan had fantastic uh, business. In fact, some of them even reported that they had the best Christmas New Year rates ever. So, uh, you know, it was a mixed bag. Then came the second wave and the domestic business also got hit. But let's talk about inbound. Inbound is just it's just not possible to, to do business in India. Uh, uh, in the last, uh, you know, 15 months and uh, uh, till the borders open, I don't think we will be able to uh, even get an, get an idea of when the business will, you know, who will return and in what shape or form. Uh, but speaking to quite a few of our customers, uh, you see even the source markets, uh, especially the big ones for India, such as UK and Germany and France and Russia, till very recently they had their borders closed too. So it's the first time actually in the history of our business or in the history of travel that you have your border shut and borders of the of your source market shut. So it's it's quite a, a very uh, unusual situation to say the least. You know, uh, just to get a sense, you know, the, the tourism sector has different specialization. Are there some firms? Uh, which only specialize in inbound tourism uh, uh, as this thing? And if so, what have they been doing in the pandemic? Uh, because, you know, I mean, two years shut uh, is, uh, is quite a challenge. No, absolutely. In fact, we are one of those companies. Uh, we employ 450 people. Uh, we are, um, uh, we used to transact, uh, you know, we had the best year in 2019-20. So a lot of investments were made. Uh, similarly, there are about another maybe 400 destination management companies that has their specialization, including the owners of the company or the management only understand inbound business. Now, you know, Dilip, it's very difficult from one day to the next to move from inbound to outbound or outbound didn't work it except Dubai and Maldives, but from inbound to domestic and, and uh, the domestic business is not agent dependent. Domestic business is driven by hotels. And uh, so, you know, it's it's not that easy from one day to the next to build a brand that too in a pandemic, you are suddenly saying I am company X, you've never heard of me, I only did inbound today, I'm going to start doing domestic. So it's not that simple to, to, to just shift gear. Secondly, your offering is very different because you know, you, 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 you are you're geared to service a certain segment of the market. But it's been very difficult for few reasons. One, there is no in invert cash. So cash flow is, is been one of the biggest problems that most companies have faced. Secondly, there has been uh, in, in India, unlike the rest of the world, in India, there has been no uh, support from the government in terms of cash subsidy for, for employees. So a lot of people, unfortunately, have not been paid or probably have given up the idea of working in the travel business and moved on to do something else. 
it's a it's a it's a drastic situation you know that is actually uh, you know quite uh, what is some 400 plus companies totally focused on inbound uh, two years literally two years no business and actually no support uh, from uh, government oh you know you 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 talked about the inbound tourism if i look at the whole tourism sector travel tourism hospitality i think uh, earlier we were talking about pre wave 1 and post wave 1 now it's pre wave 1 and 2 and post wave 2 and you know possibly wave 3 how do you think and you know, what is your view on how this industry will change going forward see uh, uh, firstly the uh, industry will have to adapt to the consumer right there is uh, we are a service delivery industry in, in, in when you talk of the travel side the question to ask is really will the customer immediately start will change their entire way of traveling i don't think the people who travel to india which are the the ones that are handled by the travel companies they are above 50 they are you know well traveled they are affluent uh, some most of them are traveling now as independent travelers some travel in groups i think the the delivery of services to india or any other destination in the de- in the destination management space is going to be exactly what we did earlier the difference will be that safety protocols people staff being vaccinated that kind of communication will have to be uh, far greater and it will also depend on the kind of people who will travel the segment maybe we will first see a lot of people traveling as individuals they'll feel probably more they'll be they'll have more courage to travel out uh, then will come the groups a lot of the, the uh, uh, a large part of the business to india in the first wave will come to goa in, in the charter flight so people want to you know fly and flop those holidays come into goa spend two weeks and go back uh, they'll hear that goa is all vaccinated by july that's the plan of the government the whole state is going to be vaccinated cases are down this place is safe let's fly in and, and enjoy the winter sun there so it will be different segments in different parts of the country it's it, we have a huge country so you know the segments will be different and the clients that will come in will be very different uh, dilip so get a sense you know what are the top 4 or 5 you, know, you mentioned goa what are the top 4 or 5 uh, destinations where inbound uh, you know uh, visitors are there uh, in india and what's the kind of volume that we talk about i mean just 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 rough idea right you're asking me a question which I, i i would answer based on the data that i have but it may not be data that suits a lot of other people but let me share it with you see firstly main business is delhi up rajasthan kerala and goa right these are the key areas where people travel and not i'm saying of course they travel to the northeast and they travel to the rest of the south and they travel to madhya pradesh they are all they are traveling all over there's no doubt about that but this is where the bulk of the business comes to right and this is where the bulk of the business will return people will come back to the predictable india first uh, you know uh, so so that is one part the second thing is that you know we have almost gone back we will almost go back to the 70s and 80s when we have to start getting people to travel again it's not like in one year the entire amount of numbers that traveled in the financial year 1920 will start will return in the first 6 months of uh, the year 2022 let's say where business is returning the problem is the numbers you know we keep talking about 10 million heading to 15 million heading to 20 million it's you know that's that's one part the true tourists that travel to india government there is a number which is 10 million now in 10 million you have people from neighboring countries if you open extra visas to bangladesh there is a surge in growth of numbers i would put the actual tourist working at uh, taking services through the business at close to about 6 million people now we have one advantage we should not just discount this number of 6 million and say it's very low because the average stay in india is 21 days so if you multiply 6 million by 21 you get really a number versus probably 10 million going to hong kong for two nights you know so you have to look at it in perspective i think 6 million is is a is a decent number there's no doubt about it i think that's what we did uh, in uh, in uh, 1920 and if we can grow this number at 10% year on year we are okay It's a very fascinating. You mentioned something, and then you gave me an answer to this question. I'm going to mix the two and ask you a question. You actually talked about Goa vaccinating everybody. 
so and then you said that delhi up rajasthan you know uh, are the key uh, you know key the inbound uh, tourism thing so if you were to take a strategy and up also i presume it is a taj trapezium and varanasi and... varanasi so supposing you were to say okay varanasi you know agra uh, delhi jaipur udaipur jodhpur you know uh, and 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 you know if you take this and say okay we got to vaccinate everyone there on a priority basis and we are going to open up the season uh, uh, for august do you think that's a good strategy you think the gov- you know this the government should the state governments and the government should look at this going forward there is uh, listen the only uh, data point that a person is going to question when traveling to a destination is the deaths at the destination that happened that's unfortunately a number that everybody will look at uh, and how many people are vaccinated are are the people who are going to handle my service are they vaccinated and are we are they following protocols now protocols is very relative we'll say yes we've got the if i go to my customer and say listen the entire journey that you are taking is going to be only handled by people who are double vaccinated we have a winner so you are absolutely right dilip the government tourism has to grow uh, if the, if these states want tourism they have to have ensure that everybody involved in hospitality that is your guides your drivers your hotel staff your everybody that is involved at monuments they all have to be double vaccinated that's a very fascinating insight uh, that is there so that you know, that's the first step but you know if you look at the pandemic uh, you know i think there are two agenda points one you mentioned what the industry is doing sanitization you know vaccination making it uh, making the trip uh, you know i mean health wise safe and communicating that but you know given the overall sector and but in particular the inbound sector what are the steps that government uh, could also take in industry also supporting government to get the confidence back so that we can you know uh, get a major role in reviving uh, you know inbound tourism so i think there'll be one thing to keep the industries afloat which are here till that happens and the second is what can we do together you know opening the air, uh, inbound travel is of course no no brainer but what are the other steps that we could take yeah so uh, you know i i think uh, i'll break this up into into different parts one is about opening the destination i think we must be very sure when we want to open it it's not a it's not like it's not to make a statement i think it is a scientific decision it is not a political decision and it is not an emotional decision it is a scientific decision so i would actually really have uh, be happy to if the and i'm sure they will do it that people within the government people within the ministry of tourism sit together and look at two or three things that you know is there going to be a third wave if there's a risk don't open right now open at the right time so that you know we have a high number of people vaccinated and the right messages go out so that is as far as opening is concerned if you ask me today if if the destination was open who would travel nobody would right now india is not ready as on 23rd of june to receive guests right which we all know that we agree on that it, it will open can open any month it moves very fast but that is one part i think should be data driven the second thing is uh, uh, you know dilip we uh, the inbound industry in particular has had like i said the worst of the travel business because the others at least had an opportunity to you know the transporters had an opportunity to ferry people to domestic holidays airlines could restart their operation uh hotels got guests uh on the domestic side and agents who were doing domestic business including people who had online who are in the online space in domestic have i presume have done a reasonably decent job inbound got had no opportunity to go out so what were we dependent on the government to give money i think we all know that it's not something that's easy for a, for a economy like india to be doling out money like is there in the west and it's not fair to even ask people to 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 pay that ask the government to go the route of the west we can't afford it there was an amount of money that the government owed us for foreign exchange earning in 1920 uh, which is the seis i read in the newspaper just two days ago that the sei's money will soon be released so this is going to be a relief for working capital and i hope 
that with this money uh, uh, the companies that have not paid their staff at least make sure that the people involved in the business are paid and have some amount of working capital ready to be ready when the business comes back so the good news is that the that the SEIS as per the news reports is going to be paid and that's a substantial uh, uh, you know that's something that will really give all of us fuel uh, uh, to get our engine started right the other part is what is expected from the ministry to start the business i think that was the, the the question also that you asked you see the role of the ministry of tourism is based on is a it's a marketing organization it has to bring business to incredible india that is the key responsibility of the ministry of tourism we have to go out with a well thought through hard hitting uh, uh, incredible india 3.0 campaign into the world to tell them whatever the message we want to give okay it has to be scientific it has to involve industry to get inputs and the government has done this they are i think more or less ready when the borders start opening they would be able to go out now the only way to do this is and the quick wins will be first give it to five key source markets where your guaranteed business will come uk germany france japan and russia these are your no brainer markets low hanging fruits go to them spend your money there start getting the people bring the confidence back in the destination so they will have to run this campaign in a very strong way and they will have to that is their the key responsibility in my view of the ministry now you can add some uh, ideas to get uh, to have you know to for optics one of the recommendations that uh, we have we have given is why why does the government say all right the first 100000 holiday visas for people applying for 30 days is free so you know a message goes out india is ready and all of that and of course the campaign will have to be built around these parameters of uh, vaccination um, uh, safety and security and and uh, the destination is following you know its protocols so that's i think the way to go it it has to, you have to keep it very simple in the beginning we need the footfall back we need confidence in customers and social media is one has one very great advantage to us the customers that will travel or the first 100000 that travel with as guests of ours with visa visas paid by the government are the ones who are going to spread the message that it's that everything is good out here so i i'm hoping for that okay so that's very interesting um in the middle east or, or, or this is not a big market for us for tourists uh, if you look at it middle east and not not really uh, the the key source markets are you know the big big business comes out of europe and america japan and russia so you know why i asked that context you know like we have this world expo in dubai where 192 countries are participating i think uh, you know we believe that it's a it's a good uh, way to project to the world that india is getting ready to receive them or has got ready to receive them what do you think are the key messages that we should actually be playing there and what is it that we should be communicating so i i think uh, uh, by the time the expo starts it's it's going to be october right that's that's when it's october, yes yes yeah. so uh, the the messages uh, the message for that for india you know everybody will focus on safety and security uh, vaccination and uh, you know we need to have uh, enough evidence of people traveling and 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 uh, you know a real customers traveling and enjoying their holidays and going back safe which is going to happen uh, from october so i think it will have to be it cannot be a message we relay on 1st october that runs for 6 months it will have to actually be pretty dynamic because you know the tourism message is going to change every few weeks and hopefully in a positive manner but i would but i would i would if you ask me one thing i would just focus on uh you know uh, uh, preparedness vaccines and uh, safety that's all people are interested in right now so you know, again you, while you mentioned uh, you know uk and 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 germany and russia and japan but uh, you know what are the other countries or which are the countries you know, these are source markets but these are the countries that have shown interest in tourism in india you know and and are looking very eagerly awaiting for the international flights to resume and big segments of tourism you know tourists and you know, tourism is going to pick up then so um, i think uh, uh, yeah it's it's actually a good question because the largest number of tourists that arrive into india from the uk so that is a market that's going to eagerly await the opening of india because there's a lot of dependence between uk and india for for tourism 
uh, the same will be for america america is a big source market and also uh, america has a lot of high paying customers who spend a lot of money on holidays to uh, to different parts including india so the us and uk are definitely important but our main business today uh, i mean the the country there is a lot of uh, uh, you know business that comes in from germany that comes in from france like i said russia and again russians will travel to goa so goa's revival will depend on russia and the rest of the scheduled business will come from these uh, key uh, markets including there i mean every place in the world is a customer to india but talking of segments i think that's that is an important uh, point to look at so there are two pieces that will start pretty much at the same time one will be the people traveling to goa for the you know fly and flop the beach holidays and that will do extremely well because that's like 8 days 10 days holiday straight in from your source country in the winter so say if we open up in october november there'll be flights that will come in from cold places in russia which is minus 30 degrees to warm goa which is ready to receive everybody fully vaccinated and everything is working to perfection and the other one, other part will be in my view would be more individual travelers that will come or specific groups like people who are traveling for a specific a group of people who know each other or like that but largely individual travel will pick up first i don't see mice coming very uh, the inse- conference business coming back uh, in the next uh, one and a half two years it's not going to be easy because that's all not only dependent on a person agreeing to travel that's also dependent on companies agreeing for their people to go on a paid trip by the company and and risking them so i think that incentive uh, uh, the incentive and conference business is definitely going to suffer Yeah, yeah. So good news for the inbound travel people, but bad news for organizations like Picky. But that's that's a separate issue because you know, we 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 thrive on people coming in from overseas uh, and from outside for our conferences. But you know, I think um, very very interesting uh, that 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 you know you feel that these markets uh, will actually add up. But you know, I have a follow up question. You said U.S. and U.S. has actually banned uh, travelers from India and they banned travelers from EU. uh last year and they're not opened up for one year so you know what do you think about this i mean if they don't open up travel from india i'm sure they won't allow their people to travel to india so you know how do we address that and what do we do yeah so you know this is this is going to be a very it's going to be a dynamic situation things will change every few weeks if you see what the uk did the uk decided that they have uh, uh they have absolutely no um, uh, you know they with their three green light red light and orange light system they they had a lot of flip flop happening and they you know portugal opened portugal closed all of the moved from green to orange so there's a lot of confusion in the consumer's mind similarly you're going to have a situation with with the us with the uk and all and we'll have to wait for i guess they will open the borders when our numbers reach a certain point or any of these variants so now it's the delta plus variant all these so this i guess a lot of the scientists involved in on either side will have to actually agree that uh, there is the the risk is going to be less it's also going to be a little bit of a political decision i assume because you know it's also uh, i'll open my border if you open yours kind of thing and question is who wants to take the risk and i don't have an answer for that dilip right now i mean to be very honest it's very difficult to answer this question if you ask me when will the business come back more or less in good shape to india i would i would put the date as 1st january 2022 okay so uh, you know on that optimistic note uh, 1st january 2022 is less is just about 6 months away uh, here so on that optimistic note uh, thank you for being with us thank you for sharing your view of you know the inbound tourism uh, you know market in india the opportunities you know the challenges things that the government uh, needs to do and things which industry needs to do but again saying that you know we all have to work together to revive the tourist interest in india and get this sector booming again thank you keep safe and keep well thank you very much and always a pleasure speaking with you dilip thank you so much